We will now hear from pastor and lawyer Joe Scott. He and his beloved wife, Betty, have worked at the last two CLS National Conferences, gathering and leading our 24-hour intercessory prayer teams. Conference participants have said that they can feel the effect of those prayers in the covering of the Lord's Spirit, not only during the conference, but beyond. In Savannah, we were privileged to have them teach a workshop on intercessory prayer. We will pick up with Joe as he teaches us about being a true intercessor, the act of petitioning God on behalf of another. Let's join him. We, we get frustrated because we're trying to get God to do what we want rather than us learning what God wants and then speaking it into this realm. True intercession doesn't seek its own, but it seeks what God wants about the matter. A true intercessor doesn't pray what he or she feels about it. Oh, that poor baby, heal it. Because, and then we'll even do scriptures with it. By his stripes we are healed. But maybe that baby's accomplished all that it was supposed to in its coming and its going. This may sound revelatory, but maybe the baby was brought in and brought and sent back home to bring us to the cross. Hello. I'm a little passionate about this, so you have to work with me. Okay. The point is, is that, you see, my mind gets me stuck all the time because I know what I want. I'll even send manage. Well, I mean, I, this is wonderful. You go, well, Lord, no, it's your will, not my will. Yeah, okay. Uh, okay. I, I, I know I'm prideful. Yeah, okay. Um, well, I'm going to pray. In fact, I'm going to fast and pray. Because if I fast and pray, I can conjure God into doing what I want. Well, let's digress just for a second. There's intercession for you. The, 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 the disciples went out, do you recall, to deliver the people? And some of them they delivered and some they weren't able to? Because really we're here trying to figure out why some of our prayers don't work. Because we know God says His word should not return void. But some of our prayers don't work and some of us get frustrated sometimes. Well, the answer has nothing to do with God. It has everything to do with us. And he said, and they came back to, to God and they said, how come we were unable to cast out this deaf and dumb spirit? And, and you hear the most astounding thing. He says, because this kind only comes out by fasting and prayer. That prayer is prosuke, by the way, by fasting and worshiping. But what does fasting and worshiping do for God? It doesn't do anything for God. It does something for us. It gets me in the mindset, in the place where I can, where I can begin to understand the will of God. I've fasted, I've prayed, and, and I've, and, and I, and I've, and, and I've, and, and I've done what I've needed to get me out of the way and get God in place in my life. Then I hear what God has to say. Then truly when the scriptures say, He will give you the desires of your heart. That's not what I want. No, he has imparted sovereignly me what he wants, and I'm then able to say, Thus saith the Lord, get up! Now, I might not say it like that in the middle of mediation, <laughs> but the thought's there. <laughs> and so the revelation comes, and I go, This mediation's over. They've been delivered. And then I just sit around and let them go through their process until they finished. And then I write them a, write them a bill so I can get paid. Thank you. Let's continue. I should be doing this like a lawyer, shouldn't I? Oh, okay. The next, so, so we see in terms of this question, what is the purpose of intercession and why is intercession necessary? It's almost obvious at this point. Because God, first of all, searches for one that he can reveal his heart to that can then speak into this realm what God wants and have it manifested. The Bible says God does nothing but that he do it, does it by his word. Hello. See, sometimes we need to stop asking when we know and we sense what God wants and start proclaiming intercessors. By his stripes you are healed. Versus, heal him, heal him, heal him God, heal him, heal him, heal him God. 
Will somebody, God, I can almost hear God saying, will somebody please hear what I've done? I've already healed them. Will you, for God's sake, start asking me for what I've already done? Because faith, it doesn't take any faith to keep asking. It takes faith to proclaim and believe. You see, you put yourself out on the line when you say, this one's getting up out of there. You put nothing on the line when you say, Lord, heal them. Hello? Do you hear what I just said? Yeah. Nothing's on the line. And I can hear David saying, I don't come to the Lord unless it costs me something. And what are you putting on the line? When you say, this one's going to get up. You're putting the one thing on the line that has stop, will stop us every time. Pride. You're risking looking like a fool. Because they might not get up. Does that mean God didn't say it? No. Does that mean that God is mad with you? No. God may have had a bigger fish, you, that he wanted to raise up. Let's continue. Who can intercede? Oh, what, what, oh, why is, who can intercede? Well, the simple answer is everybody. But the real question is not who can intercede because God can use a rock. Okay. But the question is, and I've got to move faster. The question is, who can effectively intercede? That's the question. Who can effectively intercede? Anybody could ask. But who can effectively intercede? And if you really want to know the definitional issue of it, I think if intercession is only intercession if it's effective. But rather than do that, I'll simply say, who can effectively intercede? And there are requirements for an intercessor. Whether God calls him or not, there are requirements to be able to effectively intercede. And I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time, and I'm going to, because I got to move along. But I'm going to tell you in, in, in a very few words what they are: holiness, righteousness, and a relationship with God. If your life has known unconfessed violations and sins, that not that you're struggling with, but that you haven't submitted to God, because I'm not talking about being perfect here, because I'm reminded of the fact that, um, that, that Paul was writing, he wrote most of the New Testament, penned most of the New Testament, while he was writing the book of Romans said, oh wretched man that I am, who could deliver me from this body of death? It seems to me that whenever I would do good, evil is ever present with me. He's writing that. He's writing the Bible while they're in that gall of sin. Okay? God's love doesn't change merely because of our outward actions. He doesn't love you anymore, nor love you any less, because you act better today than he loves you the same. God's love remains the same. The issue is this. Are you a man or a woman after God's own heart? That's the issue. Are you a man or a woman after God's own heart? No formulas. Are you a man? If God knows that you're a man or a woman after his heart, God will make up the difference. His grace is sufficient. God will make up the difference. But if you do everything legally right, but your heart is off, forget it. He might make up the difference too and deliver that person and you'll just be on your way to wherever that is. But a true intercessor in the absolute is a man or a woman that is able to pray, prosuke, worship God, is in relationship with the Lord, and wants more than anything what God wants rather than what they want or what everybody around them is shouting for. A man or a woman in the midst of a crowd where everybody's saying, raise them up, raise them up. And God says, no, not this one. Don't do that. Pray this. Do you have the guts in the middle of your family when everybody's saying, heal this man, and God's saying, 
leave him there. Because I got a better work for him. And I'm not finished with him yet. God, take him down. Can you do that? Easier said than done. That's the issue. Hello. When, 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 the, when everybody's praying for the baby to get well, and God said, no, I want you to pray for their peace because I'm not raising that baby up. I'm praying for your peace because God's not raising him up. He came to raise you up. It takes a lot of gut as an intercessor to do that. A lot of gut to say to a nation that unless your prophets raise up and your intercessors who are watchmen get into place, God's wrath will not be averted. We won't talk about 9-11. I just put it out there and couple it close to the last sentence. Let's continue. Who can intercede? Anybody. But I'd like you to turn, to, well, I'm going to read Isaiah chapter 62, verses 6. In Isaiah chapter 62, six, verses 6, God says that I set watchmen on the wall that shall always proclaim the Lord and give him no rest till he establishes. What I'm saying is God puts a burden on some of your hearts about other things and other people that makes no sense. Some of you are actually thinking about things that have nothing to do with your neighborhood. And you can almost have people saying, why are you worried about over there when you're not even taking care of here? Well, God did it. Why are you burdened by this? Why are things bothering you? Why do you feel, ah, you're pregnant. For the men, that may be difficult. But you're pregnant. Do you ever feel like I'm depressed? Do you ever feel down? Do you ever feel like something's wrong? But what you do is you get up and you pray about feeling better. Maybe you should pray about what was on your mind and in your heart. Maybe that baby in China or that adult in New York. Maybe that's what God has got you up at 3 o'clock in the morning thinking about. And if you'll just go and deliver that baby, you can rest again. Maybe God's got you praying about my city while you're there thinking about your own and got me praying about yours. Because see, in doing that, there's less chance for pride. It's a hidden ministry. There's less chance for it being about me. There's more of an opportunity then of it just being about God. Why else would anybody at 3 in the morning get up and tell nobody and pray for some child in China? Because God knows what we're able to handle. If he raised up this one in front of you, you might take credit for it, even though you say you're not. The Bible says the heart is deceitful above all things. And I know mine is. Because I'm a lawyer. Oh, delete that, okay? <laughs> well, you know what I'm saying. Okay, anyway. And the point is that Isaiah chapter 6, 62, verse 6, God is raising up something, a watchman, that will never let God alone. They're going to badger God, for lack of a way of putting it. They're going to badger God until God finishes working it out in them what he wants worked out. They're going to wrestle with God as an intercessors until what they're praying for is revealed to them. It doesn't matter how young you are or old. Let's continue. Let's continue. Why, why are you allowed to know the faults and troubles of others? I have Ephesians 6, uh, 18 there, discernment. Why? Simple. <laughs> God, if you're an intercessor, God is calling you to do something about it. And it's not to go over and fix it. Hello. It's about seeking what God wants about it. The truth is, every one of us in here has an opinion given any problem about the way it should be fixed. The truth is, that first inclination is probably like the first child that needs to die because the second one is the one that God loves. Get the Esau-Jacob analogy there? 
The point is, is that when you first see a circumstance and you know something about a, a, person, a, a nation or a country or a family, or, don't be so quick to come up with a solution and ask God to stamp his approval on it. Maybe you should get away from it a bit and say, Lord, what do you want? Hello. And then take the risk of actually proclaiming what God wants, even if it makes no sense. Why is it important that the things that God wants are the things that I want? Well, that's almost self-evident. Because God is going to honor his own word. What God's word goes for us to accomplish, it will accomplish. Now, you know, there is, of course, the story of Saul, the king that, they, that, was, that was given to the nation, despite the fact that they weren't supposed to have it. I guess if you ask long enough, you'll get it. But be careful that you know who is blessing you, because you might just get something that didn't actually come from God. We've got plenty of those in our household right now. They're vexing us all the time. What is the danger of sympathy in the heart of the intercessor versus compassion? At this point, it should be obvious. Sympathy will cause us to pray what we feel about the matter. It's going to be hard for you uh, men and women in this room, especially the women, in my opinion, not being a woman, who have a mother instinct about you because you want to protect and nurture and, you know, and, and guard. And, and the men, generally speaking, are, you know, we're real macho, so we don't have that issue. Um, we have other issues, okay, but the point is, is that, and so you'll find conflict in the household about how this matter should be resolved. The point is, is that it may be that both of you are wrong, and it may be that both of you are right. And that God will show you the common link if you'll just both ask him what he wants about the matter. Now, finally, in general, we pray for salvation, deliverance, and healing, but... Is God asking for us to come in alignment with another priority, for example, redemption, and what is redemption? I want to just, um, I'm not going to do uh, the one and two there. I just want to deal generally with the issue of redemption. So the purpose that God has for everything that God does. Now, clearly, as I articulated, others may find fault with it, but I'm going to make it generally. God's purpose is to restore us, store back to us everything that was lost. How's that? Yes. How can we, anybody want to argue with that? God wants us to have everything that was taken from us back. Hello? And since God in the beginning said, and I love this, I love this, I love this. God said, be, this is, this is so good. I'm excited, see, I'm, I'm going to get out in a minute. God said, be blessed. He didn't say, let there be. He said, be blessed. Be fruitful and multiply and have dominion. And he said it to that man and that woman that were one unit. He said, be blessed. And I love this. What, and when God said be, that's the end of the conversation. And that's what God wants. And God intends to redeem us back to the place where we have relationship with him, fellowship with him, and we are truly blessed. Not because we have the stuff. Tell me what more blessing is there than to be back in relationship with our Father. Hello? The stuff is fine, but put me back in relation with God. So everything, maybe he doesn't heal you physically because of the revelation that he's going to put you through and the pride that might take you down. Maybe he doesn't heal you now because he needs you to come up a little higher. Maybe he doesn't heal you now because he needs your testimony to raise somebody else up. If he doesn't heal me, I'll still praise him. Hello? I don't know what God's doing. You ask him. For you. But when it's all said and done, know this with a surety. God loves you. John 3.16 is true. It said, for God, what? So loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that would, would have. But there's one more scripture and you thought you were going to get away with that one. Not. There's one for you. It's 1 John 3.16, and it says, Greater love has no man than he lays down his life for his friend, and I call you friend. And then Jesus goes on to say, Father, I pray that as, they are, as we are, 
I want them to be.